Okay, so uh, this is Station Fall. Um, in this game, uh, you are a uh, player who is trying to direct a conspiracy uh, represented by your eight influence cubes. Um, you uh, can either be uh, innocent. You start innocent, so everyone put your disc on there to show that you are innocent. Uh, and you, bec you can become suspect or guilty. Uh, you're going to have a, uh, in your hand, you have a unused bribe, um, and you could, you're also going to have two identity cards. Uh, this is hidden information. Um, you're going to choose one of those identity cards to be your secret identity, uh, to start of the game. Um, and then your other identity card is going to be your bonus card. So you're going to choose one card to be your identity card and one card to be, uh, your bonus card. Don't worry too much about, you know, which one you choose. Just whichever is going to be your bonus, turn it upside down. So I'm doing that now myself. Um, eventually, uh, you may reveal your secret identity, and at that point, it becomes your player character, your PC. Alternatively, you could do a Skrodinger reveal, uh, if you find that your your secret identity's victory condition is not going to be something that you can reach, you can decide to instead uh, discard your secret identity without showing it to anybody, and your uh, BC is going to be your uh, new identity. All right. Um, so you win by scoring the most points. You get primary points from the yellow stars on your identity card. Uh, you get bonus points from the shields and targets on your bonus character. And uh, you can also score points for possessed bribes. If you uh, do not use your bribe, that's a point. If you have any bribes on your PC, that is uh, points. Um, the player with the most points who is not guilty, you cannot win if you're guilty, uh, wins the game. All right, so characters are the first thing to discuss. You have uh, player characters and non-player characters, PCs and NPCs. Uh, so player characters are characters that have been revealed by somebody at some point during the game. Um, NPCs are characters that have not revealed. Uh, these characters have abilities. Uh, usually, in, yes, all of these characters have two abilities, and uh, those abilities apply at all times. Uh, characters also gain extra abilities called the reveal power uh, after they have been revealed. So it may be a, a one-time ability, it may be a persistent ability, it may be both. Uh, there may be multiple abilities that a character gets. Uh, so characters can possess items, data, and bribes. Um, there is an item limit. So for all the characters, the item limit is three, and that's why they have three slots. Except for the maintenance clones, uh, they only have an item limit of two each. There are three maintenance clones in this game. Uh, so characters uh, can be human, uh, robot, data, or items. Uh, in this case, they are only uh, there are humans, robots, and the digital assistant. And the digital assistant is data. Uh, data characters cannot hold items or data. Uh, they may not perform actions except uh, as specified on the card. And in this case, a digital assistant can do system actions only. Uh, characters are live or down. Um, if they are incapacitated due to a hazard or being attacked, they are down. Otherwise, they are live. Uh, down characters cannot take actions or be activated. Um, and they can become live again. Uh, humans can become live again with uh, nanomeds. Uh, which are here, and they can be manufactured in the med lab. Um, robots uh, can be repaired, and that happens either in the uh, machine shop um, or uh, with a character with has his jury rig. In this case, the maintenance clones have jury rig, so they can also repair robots. Um, characters can also be annihilated. Um, when they are mm -hmm. annihilated, they are gone from the game. They cannot come back. Um, so uh, the goal for some of these characters is to escape. Um, you escape using uh, 
probably the escape pods. Uh, there are other ways to escape in, in this particular game. Um, when characters make it to the mesosphere uh, down here, they have escaped. Um, so, conspirators. Uh, conspirators are characters where you have put the most cubes, uh, or you are at least tied for the most cubes on uh, the, that character. So, if I put um, one cube on there, uh, and no one has more cubes than me, that is a conspirator. I can now activate that character. You can only activate your PC and conspirators. All right, uh, so that's characters. Now let's go to the map. So the map is divided into sections. Um, every bit, every named bit of the map is a section, including EVA. EVA is a section. Um, some of these sections have section actions. Uh, the purple text is the section action that you can perform in that section. Um, if you want to know what that section action is, just look at the purple, the purple player right here. Um, so section actions are actions that can only be performed in uh, that particular section. Uh, basic actions, uh, the green bit right here, can be performed uh, by anyone at any point. So sections either have zero gravity or gravity. Uh, the pink sections have no gravity. Uh, the blue and orange sections, they have gravity. Uh, and pods, the green pods, uh, may or may not have gravity. In this game, all of the pods have zero gravity. Uh, if there was a pod in the ring, which there can be here, then that would, that would have gravity. So it really depends on if it's in the ring or not. So the rings are spinning, and the spinning causes gravity. Um, so just anything that's in the rings that has gravity, anything that is not in the ring doesn't. Sections can be lit or dark. Uh, this is relevant for suspicion. Um, so dark sections are denoted by the dark icon, the little light bulb with a cross, and they're black. Um, lit sections are not black. Uh, sections can be damaged. Uh, when they are damaged, you put a token on them. Uh, you cannot do a section action in a section that is damaged. Uh, sections can be repaired uh, using a character that is jury rig. Again, the maintenance clones have jury rigs, so they can repair sections. Um, power bolt sections, the sections with the lightning bolts, so that's the mainframe, the reactor, and the fuel cells. Uh, when they are damaged, they cause uh, backup. Power. So let me. Sorry, let me put this here and make this so you can see it. So where is the? Ah, okay. So now this is not the right color. Well, I'll do that later. Uh, so a section. So the power status starts at normal power. If you damage one power section, you go to backup power. And in backup power, the cameras and jammers turn off. Right. If you damage another section, and there are two sections damaged, then you go to blackout. During blackout, bad stuff happens. Uh, the, all sections act as dark. You can't do uh, section actions outside of pods. Uh, you trigger abandoned ship. Um, Project X is released. It's it's just total mayhem. So uh, blackout uh, is bad if you uh, don't want uh, things to be bad. Um, we don't have the troubleshooter in this game. We do have a station chief, so some characters, you have some characters that want chaos and some characters that want the order, so that'll let you know whether uh, you want things to happen that are bad or not. Um, so uh, the concept of co-located, uh, so co-located characters are characters that are in the same section. If, it, if something says that... Uh, uh, characters on board. On board is all sections except EVA and launch pods. Um, so we also have the concept of spinward. So you have here spinward. Um, that uh, is relevant for throwing and fire spray. So as I mentioned, the rings are spinning, and uh, when you throw something, you have to throw anti spinward. If you were to throw something in the direction of the arrow, uh, it's just going to hit you in the face. Because you're spinning. Um, so 
And when you throw something, it has to be anti-spinward. And fire spreads in gravity. It doesn't spread in zero gravity, but it spreads in gravity in the spinward direction. Right? Um, so these solid lines are corridors. You can move from one section to another with these corridors. The red dashed lines are vents. Uh, vents are uh, only passable with tunnel rat. So uh, characters with tunnel rat, if there are any in this game, I think the Troubleshooter yes. was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, way. Yep. Yeah, the Astro Chimp has tunnel rat, so the Astro Chimp can go through those vents. Um, only characters that have tunnel rat can. Um, so these pods right here, as I mentioned before, they are sections, and they can be used to escape from the station. Uh, a pod is uh, occupied by a human or robot, um, and they have an oc occupancy limit. So each of these pods can take three humans or robots. Um, the uh, digital assistant obviously does not count. It is just data. Um, so these pods have a launch requirement, um, and they will tell you on the little white bubbles what that launch requirement is. Uh, in this game, most of them just require abandoned ship to be launched. And I will mention abandoned ship shortly. Um, okay, so that is uh, the pods. Uh, hazards. There are two types of hazards. In, well, there are three types of hazards in this game. Um, fire and gas. Uh, fire um, can be started with fire bombs, which you can manufacture in the chem lab. Or by damaging sections. If you damage the fuel cells, that'll start a fire as well. So if you want fire, that's how you can start fire. Uh, fire spreads in gravity. So if you start a fire in one of the rings, uh, you're going to place a time disc, and uh, that that when it comes back to you, when that time disc resolves, uh, the fire is going to spread in a spinward direction. Uh, gas uh, both extinguishes fire. Uh, and uh, is also a hazard. So hazards uh, down any humans that are not wearing helmets. They don't do anything to robots, but they do down humans that don't have helmets. Um, a, a, if a gas is co-located with a fire, uh, the fire goes out. If you use hazard suppression as a system action to uh, get rid of a fire, that's one, how you get rid of a fire. Um, the fire turns into a gas, and then you have to use hazard suppression again to turn the the gas into nothing. Um, so that is fire, how you get rid of it. Um, that is gas, how you get rid of it. Um, hazards are bad for humans. All right. Station systems. Um, I mentioned abandoned ship. So abandoned ship can happen a number of ways. Uh, there are officers in this game, the station chief, uh, the operative. So those officers can get to the bridge and do one of these actions here. They can do a, a section action on the bridge to uh, declare abandoned ship. So there are several here. Uh, there's just straight up abandoned ship. Uh, there's uh, activate self-destruct, which causes abandoned ship, and bypass, which also causes abandoned ship. So uh, abandoned ship just normally will uh, meet the condition to allow these pods to escape. So if these, these pods require abandoned ship to escape, so if you Declare abandoned ship, those pods can now escape. Um, Self-destruct uh, does something uh, different. It basically arms the antimatter, uh, which means that uh, you arm the antimatter, uh, you put uh, a, a time disk five, five turns out, and when you reach that fifth turn, uh, everything blows up if the antimatter is still on the station. If it's an EVA, it annihilates everything in EVA, uh, if it's in the mesosphere, it annihilates all pods and their contents. Um, if it's on board, the game ends immediately. It only ends immediately if it's on board. Um, so that is uh, self-destruct and uh, arming the antimatter. <coughs> um, power status. I mentioned uh, bag of power and blackout. Um, and uh, so bypass and blackout both kind of do the same thing in that they will release Project X. So Project X is sitting here in Vault X. Um, so Project X, here's 
uh, a an example project X, which was flipped accidentally. So we'll do uh, flip, change that. But essentially, um, if you release project X either by um, doing a bypass in the cryo lab with an officer, or um, crawling into Vault X and uh, damaging it, or throwing a firebomb to damage it, da damaging it in some way, or uh, doing the bypass action either in the cryo lab or the bridge. That will release Project X, which means you turn this over. In this case, it's the Behemoth Robo Hybrid. So that's going to start in Vault X. And now at the end of every player's turn, a thing is going to happen. In this case, they're going to damage a section and then move on and try to kill people. And just all sorts of mayhem is going to happen when a monster is released. All right. So that is a thing that happens during Blackout and if you do Bypass. <clears throat> all right. So some other station systems, you have the jammers right here. Uh, so the jammers limit uh, data from being uh, sent uh, throughout the station. So if uh, the jammers are on, you can only copy data from one co-located character to another. So you have to be in the same section in order to copy data from one character to another. If the jammers are off, then you can copy data to anyone on board, right? You can just send it to uh, anyone you like. Um, jammers being turned off also affects hackers. Uh, so the exile is a hacker. So the exile can do uh, system actions if they are, uh, if the jammers are off. Okay. Um, cameras can also be turned on and off. The cameras, so the jammers are turned off with a system action. Uh, sorry, the jammers are turned off with a system action. The cameras have to be turned off in the security station only. So you have to be in the security station to do the section action to turn cameras off. Why do you want to turn cameras off? Uh, because cameras are relevant for their witnesses. Um, if the lights are on and the cameras are on and you down a human, uh, and you are not a fugitive, uh, you become a suspect. You, the player, become a suspect. So if I were using uh, the consort and uh, I downed another human um, and the cameras are on and the lights are on, uh, then me, as a person that activated the consort, moves from innocent to suspect. Now, why does that matter? Well, it doesn't about um, suspect for the victory conditions, but there's not going to be any penalty for being a suspect. However, if evidence is sent to the authorities, meaning the authorities find out that terrible thing that you did, you become guilty. And if you become guilty, you cannot win the game uh, until you send uh, counter evidence to redeem yourself. And you do that at the end of the game um, by... Uh, just possessing evidence uh, that escapes. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a gamble. You can do something that makes you a suspect, but you know that that could uh, that could uh, come back to you know bite, bite you in the butt. So that is uh, cameras and uh, suspicion and guilt and Project X. All right. So there are certain items in the game. Uh, you have nano meds. Nanomeds can be used to revive humans. So uh, when you uh, when you revive a human, you use the nanomeds, you flip it over, and uh, it gets one more use. You use it again, you flip it over, or, or you discard it the second time that you use it. All right? So um, in general, sorry, uh, items are uh, these square tokens. Uh, they can be picked up, dropped, given, thrown, and uh, they take up an item slot. So nanomets is one item. Firebombs is another item that I mentioned. They can be manufactured in the chem lab. Uh, they can be dropped or thrown, at which point the player decides if it detonates. So you can throw a firebomb to another room and decide whether it detonates or not. If it detonates, then uh, that room is on fire. Um, so tools are another... Item. So tools are uh, essentially tools of destruction. Uh, there are no constructive tools in this game. Tools are used to uh, damage sections and attack. 
uh, human uh, robots and humans without a helmet. So you can use a tool to attack any robot or human without a helmet. Um, guns are uh, more powerful weapons. They can be used to down any character, uh, any any human or robot character, uh, regardless of whether they have a helmet or not. Uh, robots are not protected by helmets, by the way. Um, helmets protect humans from hazards and attacks with tools. So other items, uh, you have the briefcase and the artifact here. Those matter for certain victory conditions. They have no special abilities. They're just a thing that some of you might want to get for certain reasons. Um, some items are integral. Uh, there doesn't seem like there are any integral items in this game. Uh, but some items can't be removed. They can't be taken from somebody. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, so, moving on. Um, there are some I item, there's some tokens that act like items, but they're not items. So, this biocontamination here on the microbiologist, it takes up an item slot, but it's not an item. Uh, if you were to go to the bio lab, uh, you have to take a bio lab token or sorry a, a contamination token and that takes up one of your item slots essentially you know these spores are got you sick and you can hold less stuff now. uh compromat is a another uh component that acts like an item but is not an item so you pick it up like an item but it goes to your hand um Compromat allows you to do a free action with any character for activation phase with any NPC or with a PC with permission. So if if no one has revealed as that character, you can use a Compromat to uh, take uh, to do an action with that character. Uh, if it is a PC, if that person has revealed uh, as that character, you ask them um, to do that thing. And if they refuse, um, they go from innocent to suspect if they are innocent. Um, so that is compromise. So data is another type of components. They are not items. Uh, so there's different types of data in this game. There's a digital assistant. That's data. There's uh, the evidence, which can be manufactured in the security station. And there's the X secret, which can be manufactured in the bio lab. So uh, data is not an item. It cannot be picked up or dropped, uh, but it can be manufactured in the places that I mentioned, uh, and it can be copied. Uh, it can be deleted by a PC, so only a PC may delete data, and it can be jacked. So jacking works like attacking, um, and I'll, I'll go over the actions in a bit. Um, so a character can only possess a single type of data, uh, of each type of data, so you can produce you know, three different types of data in this particular game. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it can be copied to each character and it can be sent to offsites. There are three different offsites using array control. And you might want to do that for your victory condition. If it says, you know, if the news contain, if the news gets the evidence, you get a certain amount of points. That's how you would do that. You would go to array control and you would send it or uh, at the end of the game, if you possess that data, you can choose to send it to um, one or more offsites. All right, so what, let's go on to actions. So actions are performed by characters. Um, down characters cannot perform actions. So when you activate a character, um, you are... So essentially, the sequence of play would be uh, you choose to reveal if you want, uh, so decide whether you want to reveal or not. Then decide uh, if you want to influence a character. You can only influence one character, right? So let's say I'm going to influence the consort. And then you activate a character. You can only activate a conspirator. So in this case, the conspirator has a cube there. So I can activate them, and I do that. And then you do one action with that conspirator. And if there were no discs on this conspirator at the start of your turn, you can do another action. 
right? So in this case, if I if I put my disk on there, I can do two actions with a consort. But the next time, if I wanted to activate the consort, I can't do that second action, right? Uh, instead of that, you could decide to renegotiate. So instead of doing uh, an activation, you, you can decide to renegotiate. And that's basically taking back your activation disk and optionally a cube from any character that has not escaped or been annihilated. All right, so you can choose to activate or renegotiate. And then uh, part of your activation involves using uh, bribes or compromat. So you can use up to one bribe and up to one compromat during your activation phase. And then you go to the resolve uh, phase, which is really just resolving any time disk uh, and you know anything that may involve uh, time disk on on the map, on the turn track, uh, a monster that you need to do a, a an action for, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, then uh, we do our end around stuff and uh, we move up. Uh, so the actions that you can do, I'll go over briefly. So you have your basic actions, which are here. Um, and the first action is step. So step is just moving from one section to another. Um, so you can move from one section to another through corridors and tunnel rats can move through vents as well. Uh, as part of your step action, you could drag another character. Um, a player may only drag a char one character on their turn. So through no combination can you drag the same character more than once. Or drag a character more than once. Uh, there are these locks here. Um, these locks you cannot uh, step through unless you are an officer. An officer can step through locks and the lock is removed when an officer steps through locks. You can, in this particular game, because we have the digital assistant, do the um, lockdown system action, and that will allow you to add, remove, or move locks. Um, but for the most part, you can't move through locks. All right, so that's a step action. Next is the pick up or drop. So uh, you can pick up or drop an item if you have the space for it. If you don't have the space for it, you can't pick up until you drop something else. Um, you have one free pick up or drop action on your turn. Uh, so uh, any any uh, PC or any human or robot can do a free pick up or drop. Um, give is uh, the next action. So give is just giving an item from one character to another. Uh, you can't give something to someone on, if it exceeds their item limit. And uh, given items cannot be refused. So throw is throwing an item. So it's basically just moving an item from one section to another. Again, when you're spinward, you have to throw anti-spinward. So if you're in the rings, you can only throw anti-spinward. Um, next is copy. So copy is copying data, as I mentioned. And then deleting data. Uh, is deleting a copy of the data that you as a PC have. So if somebody sends you a copy of data that you don't want for some reason, you can delete it as an action. So then we have attack. So uh, attack allows you to attack with a tool or a gun. As I mentioned, with a tool, you can attack uh, robots or humans without helmets. Um, with a gun, you can attack any human or robot. Jack works like attack. Or rather, uh, you can jack an item or data from any character uh, that you could attack. So if, if you can attack someone, you can jack. So uh, you may be co-located with somebody, and if you have a tool and they don't have a helmet, you can take their items or you can take their data, is essentially how that would work. Um, next is sabotage. So sabotage is using a tool or gun to damage a section um, if it's not already damaged. 
Uh, revive is an action you can do with nano minutes. So if you have nano minutes and you are co-located with a down human, you can use nano minutes to, to revive them. And then uh, you flip it from uh, two to one. Or if it's at, already at one, you remove it. And then uh, wait is the last basic action. Wait is just skipping, skipping an action. Uh, when you wait, you can return your activation disc. So you may choose just to do only one action with that character and then uh, return your activation disc uh, so that you can do two actions next time for that character, uh, perhaps. All right, so those are the basic actions. Then we have certain section actions. So I already mentioned abandoned ship. You can do from the bridge only if you have officer. Transmit. These are actions that can only be done in certain sections. All right. Uh, and as I mentioned, the uh, the purple text tells you specifically those uh, those section actions that you can do. So uh, abandoned ship can be done from the bridge uh, with a character that has the officer ability. Transmit can be done from array control if you have data and you can send it to one offsite. Um, bypass allows you to uh, trigger abandoned ship and release Project X. It can only be done with an officer. Uh, decontaminates uh, can be done in the tanks. So if you uh, have a contamination marker and you want to get rid of it, uh, you can get rid of it in the tanks with a decontaminate section action. So eject antimatter happens here in magnetic containment. Uh, you can use that to eject the antimatter into EBA. And that will arm the antimatter, as I mentioned previously. So uh, pod launch uh, is one of three launch section actions that you can do. So a pod launch can be done from inside any escape pod. So if you are inside an escape pod, you can uh, do the section action pod launch. And what that does is uh, you're going to take one of your time disks and you're going to put it on the uh, pod. And that signifies that at the end of your next turn, that pod is going to launch. And it's going to launch regardless of what you do. So if you are dragged out of that pod, if the pod is damaged, it's going to launch. If a pod launches when it is damaged, anything inside is annihilated. And that pod itself is annihilated. Uh, so. Don't be in a damaged pod when it launches if you don't want that character to be annihilated. So a section launch um, allows you to immediately launch a pod from an adjacent section. So if you are in the aft airlocks, you could launch uh, one of these pods if it is occupied. So if you have somebody that you want to launch that is in these pods and you don't, you can't wait a turn or you don't want to wait a turn, uh, get somebody into the after locks and, and launch them. A bridge launch happens from the bridge. It can be done with an officer. And a bridge launch will launch every occupied pod um, that only has that requirement. So if you have three or four different people in different pods and you want to launch them all at once, that's the way to do it. So the manufacture section action allows you to manufacture uh, items or data. So you can manufacture helmets, tools, and guns here in the print shop. The gun requires officer, but the other ones can be done at any point. Uh, you can manufacture nano meds in the med lab. Um, you can manufacture data in different places. So you can manufacture uh, the X secret in bio lab, evidence in the security station, et cetera, et cetera. Just there's different places where you can manufacture meditate can be done in the therapy garden so um when a character reveals when a player reveals as a certain character any cubes that are on that character are going to be sent to the betrayal box so uh if you have four cubes on a character and that character reveals um that's that's a bad day for you uh it's going to go to the betrayal box however you can get those cubes back if your PC goes to the therapy garden and meditates. So that is a way to get cubes back from betrayal. Uh, you can do a repair action in the machine shop. 
So that is how you can repair robots. You drag them to the machine shop and uh, do a repair action there. Uh, as I mentioned, Jury Rig also allows you to repair robots. Um, so the maintenance clones uh, can do that. Um, the self-destruct action I mentioned is in the bridge. Uh, space allows you to uh, space a body. Uh, you can just throw a character into EVA. Um, they have to be downed, um, but you just push them into EVA. And then the cameras on off action I already mentioned. That happens in the security station. And that's how you turn the cameras on and off. And that matters for suspicion and guilt. Uh, there are also system actions, um, which have been renamed to console actions. So keep that in mind for anyone that's playing this in the future, but we don't have the new art yet. Um, so system actions uh, are actions that can only be done in a place that has this icon or by certain characters that can do the system action. So uh, if you want to do a system action, you need to be either in the mainframe or the security station or you can do it with a digital assistant or anyone that has hacker, anyone that has uh, an ability that allows you to do a system action. There are two system actions. One of them is turning the cameras on and off. Sorry, three in this game. One that turns the cameras uh, and cameras, or sorry, one that turns the cameras on and off. One that does hazard suppression, which will um, extinguish fires and gas. And one that allows you to add locks to corridors. So those are the three system actions you can do in this game. All right, so uh, we do that for a certain number of rounds. In a five-player game, it's going to be 12 rounds. And uh, at that point, we're going to decide, uh, we're going to see whether we get one more turn. So when we get to, uh, at the end of turn one, we're going to uh, see if uh, this is orbiting or station fall. Uh, there's a one in three chance that you get one more turn. And if you get one more turn, you take it. If you don't, that it, station fall happens. And during station fall, uh, you're going to do these steps right here. You're going to reveal. So any character that has not revealed at that point will reveal. And you do all the uh, the same steps of moving cubes to betrayal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then you're going to deliver any data. So if you are a, you are an escaped character that has data. You can choose to send that data to one of these offsites, uh, or any number of these offsites, and then you're going to score. So you're going to score uh, your primary points. You're going to score for your bonus points, and your bonus points are uh, either green shields or red targets or blue shields. So the shields are uh, points for uh, saving uh, that character. Uh, if that character escapes, you get those points. The red targets are points that you get for having that character down before station fall. It's not enough that they died on the station. They have to suffer first. And then you get extra points for bribes, uh, possessed bribes. So if you didn't use your bribe and if other people bribed your PC, those are extra points that you get. You lose points for going over your conspiracy limit. So you'll see on your identity card... Uh, every character has a conspiracy limit. That's how many cubes you can put out before you start losing points. So you have eight cubes, but if you can only use four, that means if you put all eight cubes out, you're going to lose four points at the end of the game. Uh, the winner is the player with the most points who is not guilty. Uh, the tiebreaker is whoever has the least cubes in the betrayal box. Uh, the second tiebreaker is whoever has the least, um, uh, the most unused uh, influence cubes. Um, and, uh, no, that's, uh, that's a game. Any questions?